Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Newton's method. In the previous video, we wrote some code that applied Newton's method to a point that was pretty good. At the end, we got an approximation for a root of this function f that was uh, not bad at all. Um, in this video, we're going to apply at a point that doesn't do such a good job of estimating a root. So all I have here is some of the code copied from last time. This is just the style we're using for our plots. Here's our function, the derivative, and the function we wrote that returns uh, x after one iteration of Newton's method. And here's just the plot of our function f of x. So we can see where does it cross the x-axis. There's one real zero, two imaginary zeros. So on this plot, exactly one zero. And so it's around here at about negative 1.7. So let's write the code that now does Newton's method, but at this uh, starting point that's negative 0 0.5. So I'm gonna go a little bit fast in this section just because it's exactly the same as the previous video when we applied at negative 1.5, but now we're just at negative 0 0.5. So that's our point Z. We're still gonna do three reps. I'm going to create a NumPy array to store the results. So np.zeros of reps plus one, because remember the first entry is our starting point, and then we fill in the rest with the results from running Newton's method each time. And I'm going to say ARR of zero is equal to Z. So all of this is the same as last time, and same for actually running um, Newton's method three times. So I'll say for I in range reps, ARR of I plus one, is going to be Newton of ARR of I. Again, this was all covered in the previous video, so definitely go back and watch it or rewatch it if you're still confused about this or reach out about questions. But now, okay, let's run. And oops, it's not Newton, it's just Newt, but I named it. Now let's take a look at ARR. So we can see here we do negative 0.5, then 1.8. And let's see, so for instance, if I run Newt of 1.8, Oops. This gives me 1.2518, which is the value that's placed here. And to see how um, kind of Newton's method approximated here, let's evaluate our function f at this point. So I'm going to say f of ARR take the last element. And we can see here it's negative 0 0.93692 blah blah blah. Um, so pretty far away from zero versus if we recall, I'm going to scroll up to our old code. Remember when we applied our function f to this array, the last value was very close to zero. So it's negative six by 10 to the negative five. So definitely much worse. Um, let's kind of visualize what's happening. So let's see where I've lost my place. So, okay, what's happening here is we're starting at negative 0 0.5. So we can imagine, okay, let's draw the tangent line. It's going to hit our function somewhere over here. So we can see where that's going to cross the x-axis is moving farther away from negative uh, 1.7. Um, that's not always a bad thing. It has the possibility to kind of return backwards, but let's kind of plot the tangent lines and see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a helper function. And let's see, I'm going to call it T-A-N-G for tangent. As input, I'm going to have our point x naught. And what I want it to return, so I want it to return a function. So I'm going to say lambda x. Now, if you remember from your calculus classes, I'll say recall the slope or kind of, I'll say the equation of the tangent line to f at a point x naught is given by, so we have y minus oops, y, let's call it, I'll call it f of x naught is equal to f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. So here's the equation. So y minus f at x naught, so that's like y uh, one, is equal to f of x naught times x minus x naught. So then if we were to just rearrange this so that it's y equals and then a function of x, what we would get, so this gives the equation so we have y equals f prime of x naught times x minus x naught plus f of x naught. Let me add a period at the end. So all we need to do is just, that's the function that we want to return. 
So remember, df is our derivative. So df of x naught, and here we have x0 times x minus x0 plus f of x0. So this is the function that gives us the line tangent. And now what we want to do is plot it. So I'm going to go to our plot here. And let's see. Actually, what I want to do instead, I think, is where are, here's our for loops, so for our repetitions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this code further down. Oops. And what I'm going to do is within this for loop, I'm going to say, let's have here, x dot plot. So we want the point x, comma, tangent, arr of i. So remember, tangent returns a function. So we want to apply this at x. And maybe to make this more clear, I'm going to just also copy paste this code. Um, so x is already defined, but let's have it here just for good measure. All right, this is looking good. So let's run this and see what happens. Oops, and it's not happy with something. So I'm probably off by parentheses somewhere. So, okay, tangent ARR of I. So this is the X point that we want to plot. And then tangent returns a function, so we want to evaluate it at x. So let's see, what's it not happy with? Oh, I see. If we go back to our tangent function, it should be multiplication here. Um, so that's what's going on. So I'm going to rerun this. And hopefully this works now. So, okay, looking pretty good. Um, I can change the x limits and the y limits so that it looks a little bit better. But let's even just kind of trace through this right now and see what's going on. So I remind ourselves, what does ARR look like? So remember, we start at x equal to negative 0.5. So this orange line is the line tangent at that point. And we can ask, where does that cross the x-axis? So it's going to be around here. So it's a little smaller than 2, it looks like. So we get 1.8. Then we draw the line tangent to the function at 1.8. So that's this green line here. Where does the green line cross the x-axis? It's around this point here. So that's in between 1 and 1.5. So here we get 1.25. And then if we go one more time, so we draw the tangent line once again, that's this red line. And where does that cross the x-axis? It's here around something a little bit greater than 0 0.5, so 0 0.7. And we can see, okay, our, it's giving our function here versus the zero is all the way over here. So a couple of things that we can do um, to make this plot nicer. What if we plot all of the x points that have like kind of like every iteration of Newton's method? Let's plot the x points that it gives us. So what we can do is I can say, actually let me do it like this. Let's do x dot plot. Now let's do arr of i plus one. Now remember the y value is going to be zero there because this is where it crosses the x-axis. And then, um, basically, if I want to plot circles, it's the same syntax as MATLAB. I'm going to specify O for circle, and let's have it be black circles. So we can see here, zero or kind of first it was 0 0.5. We didn't plot that one. Then it went to 1.8. So 1.8 is about here. Then it went to 1.25. So there's 1.25. Then it went to 0 0.71. So there's that point. Um, let's see, the x limits look pretty good. The y limits, so maybe I can shrink this a bit just so that I can zoom in a little bit more. So the way I can do that is I can say x.set. I'm going to say x limits. Let's have it go from negative 1 to 2. And oops, okay, what I did wrong here is I should pass the limits as a tuple. And let's also specify the y limits now. And let's say maybe negative two to four. So we can see here, we've zoomed in a lot more and it's easier to see the tangent lines. So, okay, this is looking really good so far. Uh, what if now we wanted to change the number of reps? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the reps. 
Oops, where did I define? All the way up here. I'm going to change the reps to 10. Then I'll come back down here and let's run it again. And we can see here, it's kind of going in between these points. It doesn't look like it's converging to zero at all. Um, so maybe let's do an example. Let's change it to z equals negative 1.5. Remember that was at our good point. So what I'm going to do, oops, and notice here it's kind of putting these values. So I can fix that by putting, let's do semicolons here and here. And I feel like I'm missing one somewhere. There it goes. All right, so this is looking good so far. Let's, like I said, do this now instead with z equals negative 1.5. So that was our good point. So I'm going to copy paste this block of code. All right, there's the copy pasted one. But all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump back up to the start of this video and where we defined z. So now I'm going to say z equals negative 1.5. Still going to do 10 reps, but now let's take a look. Let's see how this updates. So now I'm going to change the x limits really quick because remember we started negative 1.5. So I'm now going to say let's do negative 2. Maybe even a little bit further, let's say negative three. So we can see here, and I I think I should change the y limits too. Let's just see a little bit more. Let's go from negative five to five. So we can see here all of these points are clustering around the actual zero of our function. That's around negative 1.7, compared to this previous one where the actual zero is way far away and kind of it's somewhat random, kind of how these points are getting clustered. Um, maybe one more example. So I'm going to show you something a little bit strange. So again, I'm going to just copy paste this code. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the example with z equal to zero. So if you watched our introduction video, um, we did a Desmos example that's going to look very similar to this. So notice now that what's happening, and actually let me reset these x limits. So what's happening here, remember we did 10 reps, but Newton's method is oscillating perfectly between 0 and 1.5. So for instance, if I looked at ARR, I can see here it's giving me the points 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is one example where Newton's method just doesn't work at all. It's going to forever oscillate between these two values. So in the next video, we'll analyze Newton's method in a little bit more detail. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you there.